about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ it wants is, you to attain. One of Thank the you. Deep religious confusions that we inherited for a long time. That philosophy that God can just veto men and just show up. No. Even the concept of the thief in the night. Holy Spirit, help me. I think I should just sing to him to calm him down. So we go to our message today. You know, many believers have been deceived for many, many years that Jesus is coming. Um, how? As a thief in the night. It matters how we learn. I continue to say this and it matters how that we we are mentored. Jesus is coming as a thief in the night not to the church. He cannot come as a thief in the night to the church. It doesn't make sense. A husband does not come back home as a thief. No, listen, that's not even it. Let me just, can I just clear this before we get to the word? We are believers. A Christian is one who has submitted to the authority of the word of God more than any opinion. First Thessalonians chapter 5. This is where this confusion came from. It's good to read your Bible. Let's, let's, go, let's go there. Most believers don't read their Bibles. First Thessalonians chapter 5. <laughs> are we ready we'll read it together and I'm not going to talk when we get to the place where I will talk I will talk one two go but concerning the times and seasons brethren you have no need please just go back there you have no need verse one that I write unto you verse two for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord Comet as a thief in the night. This is where many people stop. Verse 3. For when they, not you, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. This is the deliverance. Next verse. Read it if you are a Christian. But ye who are of the fold, brethren, you are living in the light. You are not in darkness that that day should overtake you. The Bible says the coming of Christ will be in the similitude of the days of Noah. The flood did not take Noah by surprise. The ark was made of gopher wood. Three stories. All the animals came in. When they came in, God himself closed the door and the flood started. Revival, revival. Let's go to revival. <laughs> Let's go to revival. I mean, it's good to come to church and be delivered. Real deliverance is preached.
So we began to discuss that there are ordinances of revival. That means there are authorized spiritual pathways to both activate and preserve the move of God. A few things that you may want to note, I'm sure that there should be a way of getting these teachings, you know, so I'm, I'm pleased you may want to get and listen to it again and again and again. We did say that it is very usual for the last or current move of God to fight the next move of God. If you have the time, listen to my teaching why revivals die. There is only one reason why revivals die. The humanity of men. The fact that those who pioneer and sustain these revivals are human. The, the, the reality of our humanity interrupts God's program. And most times revivals die. So we picked on the principles. Number one yesterday was what? If you remember, prayer. The ministry of prayer. And I said a few things that I want to reiterate, very important, that the primary assignment of prayer is not for supplications. The primary assignment of prayer is not even for warfare. That prayer as designed by God was a system of edification. It's a mechanism by which believers transit. When you pray, it's akin to molting. The way a snake molds, you come out of the lower version of yourself into another dimension. For as long as our idea of prayer is just an instrument of warfare or an instrument of receiving things, our prayer life will not be rich. Because you will be frustrated by results you are trying to look at. Are we together now? Yes. Edification. He says in Acts chapter 1, you shall receive power. That when the Holy Ghost comes, whatever comes with him is called power. In Acts chapter 2, what came with him is tongues. Acts chapter 1, he says the Holy Ghost is coming, but he's not coming empty-handed. That whatever you see him come with, the name of that thing is power. In Acts chapter 2, the name of what he brought, the Bible called it tongues. So there is a relationship between that tongues he brought and spiritual power. Hallelujah. It is important that believers pray. Bring me a weak believer, weak, confused believer and submit that believer to a system of prayer, correct Bible-based prayer. Give that person one month, you will see that fear, limitation, timidity, it will just fade away strength. I can tell you why believers are very weak. Because we do not pray. There is a testimony of prayer upon a man. You know that this man is a man of prayer. He may not be a man of knowledge. But as far as the strength and the stamina is concerned, you can know. A healthy prayer life is discernible. Do you understand? There is a light. There is, there is, you can sense the impulses of a healthy prayer life. It's not by the huskiness of the voice. No. You can stand close to a man and know that this man, spirit man, is weak. Very, very weak. Even if knowledgeable. We need a lot of strength. We need a lot of strength for the journey ahead. We need a lot of strength. If you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. So if because of rent, you go back and harass God and say, God, I've been trying for you. It's as if you are not seeing me. Those things are symptoms of a level of transition that has not happened yet in prayer. That when you ascend in the ministry of prayer, you get to a point where you can sit in the midst of fire. And you are not talking to God about the fire. You are talking to God about what happens after the fire. As if the fire is not there. It's a level of maturity 
that is proof of your growth. So you see people sit down and they are counseling others and laughing. But when they tell you what they themselves are going through, you say, and you have the grace to counsel. Something happened to them in prayer. Another expression of prayer, and I'm glad we're adults here, prayer is akin to a man knowing his wife. All right? Yes. You, it, it, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like intimacy. A man knowing his wife. That means that you expect an exchange. In this case, you are the bride. And the husband, the Holy Spirit, who represents the presence of the Father and Jesus. So there is a transference of virtue and possibilities. You are impregnated with realities. So you leave that prayer place with a dimension of energy. Like a woman receives seed. She doesn't advise the seed to start growing or to get attached to their womb. Programmed in that system, the, the seed knows what to do and the womb knows what to do. Her assignment is just to receive it. And by the next day, she doesn't want to eat something again. So something happens to you in the place of prayer. When you are done, you will very soon find out that you didn't have the courage to tell your friends no. By weekend, uh, no, not the former you. The former you will rush to that bar with speed. But now you are finding out that there is a greater fortitude. There is a grace that helps men to say no. And you can look at them and say, gentlemen, this is not me again. Prayer is powerful. The last official thing Jesus did before his passion was prayer. He went to Gethsemane and prayed and prayed. The Bible says in one of the synoptics that he prayed repeating the same words three times. If Jesus did not pray, you would have been surprised what would happen on the way to Golgotha. Because he was in every way a man. That means the weariness of men. Look, let me tell you, all men are men. One of the systems that separates you as though not a man is the possibilities that you encounter in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. You can get up and pray and in that prayer, you can receive an impartation. It's like a vaccination. The joy of the Lord. As soon as you step into the office, here comes a lousy person programmed by darkness to frustrate your day. And the director says, I've been looking at you. Be careful. And ordinarily you say, sir, don't shout at me like that. Or you are my younger brother. It's just because, <laughs> but because you have been secured in the place of prayer. You exhibit qualities that are not given to men. A man should be angry. But you look and say, it's all right, sir. God bless you. And they say, don't be keeping quiet like this. So this is Nigeria. You have been cultured. I tell you why people behave as if they are not children of God. Something happens to you in the place of prayer. Most of our prayer life is not excited because it's, it's not exciting because it's need driven. Need driven. As soon as you just quickly introduce yourself, Lord God, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, you are the multi breasted one. You, all those things are preambles quickly so that you just and say, Okay, Lord, I'm here now. I'm here. And you, you stop even praying again and say, Lord, I'm this one. I'm not quoting any scripture again. I'm here to talk to you about this issue. How long will my husband keep behaving? Is it that you are not, you know, all those things? They are wonderful. There is, a, there is an aspect of prayer that can respond to petitions but you don't know the blessedness of prayer until you see how exciting it is when prayer is focused on transformation are, are, are we together now we just help the lady so it's very important for you to understand this believers don't pray believers don't pray I'm telling you this or believers pray wrongly you just go and hold on to someone's hold on to someone's building hold his window somewhere and you are crying and shouting you see I hope you are not embarrassed let me tell you sincerely we have to trust God for grace to help us to be wise 
the things of the spirit don't work like that let me teach you how success comes we're not discussing success but let me just this the moment you are seeking it you will never get it these things were never designed to be pursued I was teaching my people the other day listen let me tell you this life is dimensional as programmed by God and every dimension has the possibilities that are supposed to come are we together so call it level one two three four five if you are in level one in your understanding and perception and you want the result of level five if you get it and bring it here that level will fight it and send it out of your life you grow when you grow all the realities that accrue that level of growth will come to you success is attracted by who you are becoming not what you go, do and get no it's why many people fail our labor is to try to draw things that are in dimensions that are higher than our understanding and perception the assignment is to journey with the Holy Spirit as you transit to these realms everything around you that is lower than that realm will be instructed to leave you your contacts your friends your clothes your money everything there is a law that edits your life at every realm see this is why we are frustrated because some things we are doing there is a law that should be doing it but because we do not understand that they have been pre-programmed our worry over them understanding brings ease so you will see a young man for instance who is just starting life and insists that he must fly business class and while you are sitting there your realm is fighting it you know you are not supposed to be here your understanding how you know you are not there is only one aspect of your life is there when you grow everything grows you are in business class but your clothes are not for business class your mind is not for business class the recharge card in your phone is not for business it's proof that you you follow the window to be there when you are patient and you grow everything will grow together the same energy it takes to be fake is the same energy it takes to be real. So we are frustrated. That's why most of our prayer lives are full of requests and pain and shouting and saying, Lord, I can't believe this. We're in the same school with this person. What I saw today, I won't let you rest. The Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. You see, those kinds of scriptures... We, we just because the Bible is a prophetic book you can make it speak any language you want a herbalist can use the Bible to destroy you it's a prophetic book so we have to be very careful these needs and cares many times they come from the lusts that are enshrined in our hearts that were designed to be corrected in the place of prayer many things happen when we pray the purging of the spirit your motives are purged the need to prove a point is eroded quickly because God helps you to understand that growth is something that is natural with men. That means I can live a former version of myself to another version. So when you see the former me, don't use the former me to judge how I will be tomorrow. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The average prayer life of a believer in Nigeria is need-driven. And there's nothing wrong with that, except for the fact that it makes no sense to pray for six hours asking for things. It doesn't make sense. Do you have that much prayer request? Or is God that deaf? If your prayer life is need-driven, 20 minutes is fair. You are talking to an intelligent God. Rent, oh God. <laughs> my wife oh god very simple you are and, and you are ticking the list so why will i pray for five hours what am i asking for but if the prayer is for intimacy and growth hmm. 
Just saying thank you alone can take one hour. Mm. This is how the mature pray. While you are there, oh God! And someone can just be thinking, your mercy, oh God. He's starting to pray, oh. Look what you have done to me. Mighty God. And before you sing in tongues to start, you, that one is just knocking on the gate. <laughs> Shala, That's why people pray well during retreats. Shala, Ketabarakatosia. No prayer request. The angels are there. No request. I say, who is this man? I hope you know the angels study us too to know God more. The angels are not the highest of God's creation. Man is. So they depend on our interaction to know God the more too. And while the angels wait, the only vials they carry from us is an incense of worship and gratitude. For hours, you're just singing songs and blessing him. One more minute, pray in the spirit. Salakando pras kada barato sada balakato prandas kada bredege de bo shalakata empretos kaparus kada brehesh kada balanda kroska kratos kale bradish kale bredos azeneke tepa shalabrada kade balada balada bos. Remember, this is a training. It's a church service, but it's a training. Just a few seconds and you are done. Rabaris kabaranda balika pras kade baruta sada balakotos. Sanis Kabaranda Gadu Sabretes Kalabaruta Sadebeletus Salanandas Kabaratos Kabradis and Kapaharutasia Shabo Sabarus Kabarundas Kalabarutis In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Prayer, very powerful, gives your life focus and helps you to grow. Please, if there's anything you want to learn in this conference about prayer, is return to the place of prayer as an instrument of growth, intimacy, and transformation. More than an instrument of obtaining requests, more than an instrument of fighting demons there is a place for them but the larger pie is for your growth number two thank you for all those who went around just making things happen god bless you let's get to the word number two the second ordinance of revival if you want to activate and also preserve the move of God, write this down. The regular convergence of believers within a territory to be trained, equipped, empowered. You cannot have a revival and you cannot preserve a revival when there is no platform within a territory that makes for the regular convergence of believers for the purpose of equipping for the purpose of training for the purpose of empowerment and also a platform to receive the blueprint of the speakings and the dealings of god within that season i will not be ignorant he says to bring you in remembrance of these things although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. There is what God was doing but there is what God is doing. And what God was doing can fight what he is doing. Let me tell you this. Look at me. A territory is in trouble when there are no apostolic and prophetic platforms that make for the convergence of believers for the purpose of mentorship and growth. This was the strategy handed down by our fathers. More than internet connection. Are we together now? 
more than the ability to use online platforms and technology you can know the spirit when you see spiritual barrenness within a territory it's a report card it's showing you the absence of true apostolic and prophetic platforms within that territory that makes for a system of convergence Acts chapter 2 this is the model from verse 42 just turn to your Bible the Bible says, ask for the ancient parts. It didn't say invent. There are ancient parts. These things are patterns. They are ordinances that preserve the move of God in the territory. Some of our fathers were not educated, but they had the privilege to work with the Holy Ghost. And they captured these dimensions. Acts chapter 2. I'll read from verse 42. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. Let me read it very quickly. And they continued. Everybody say continued. This is the early church. The model that was created for us. The early church. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread. And in what? Prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men, every man as every man had need. 46. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. 47. Praising God and having favor with all people. And then the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. There is a model that if compromised will never host God. God is a God of patterns. His patterns must be obeyed to host his glory. The regular convergence of believers. Listen, let me tell you this. It is the reason why I believe in excellence, but we must be careful to not lose the texture of the correct exegesis of the word when believers are gathered together. Let me tell you this. If you see, the effect of losing out on God's patterns does not show in one year. It doesn't even show in five years. So you may think progress is being made. There are things that the church is and there are things the church is not. We must be careful to draw the line to know what the church is and what the church is not. The regular convergence of believers. Is God speaking to us? It's important. I believe in the internet. I believe in all of that. But we read Psalm 133 and it was prophetic. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says that state is like the head, the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, the priest. So there is priesthood in that kind of gathering. And then it says the system of transfer is that it starts from his head to his skirts to his body. And then it says there. Not in that location, in that strategy, God has commanded the blessing. There are things you cannot obtain in your personal prayer life. There are things you cannot get alone. It happens when there is a convergence of believers for the purpose of mentorship, for the purpose of training. Not information, training. Mentorship is not a transference of information. Mentorship is a meticulous guiding of a man. It's more than just giving an information. Regular convergence of believers. As, 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 as you are here seated, remember your family. Let me tell you this. You know why? Do you know, sir? Every time a nation has, a, has serious trouble,
the correct way to deal with national issues is to go to the community because nations are made of communities and every community is made of a family so you address things that way dealing with things at a national level is a waste of time because every nation is broken into regions communities and the last bus stop is family so when evil wants to ferment and get to a national it starts from families then if unhindered communities, then territories, then the nation. Every thief came from a family. Every troublemaker came from a family. Every family must be a reflection of a true church. A true church. I teach my people again and again. Priesthood must be demonstrated even at family level. When I talk of convergence like this, I don't necessarily just talk about meeting in platforms like this, which is important, but even in your home. There are men whose children have never seen them teach the word in the home. They've seen them count money. They've seen them argue about contracts, but not to count this. Imagine how it will be that your children are sleeping in the night and you get up as the priest of the home. Shabbos, Koparanda, Kata. From the parlor to every room. You are laying hands on everybody. You lay hands on your wife. She says, what's this? She says, no, no, no. It's priesthood. Sleep. It's my duty. I'm sanitizing the spiritual climate. You are not a man of God, though, but you are a priest. One day, let me tell you what will happen. When you get up, your small son will get up with you. He will cry and insist to follow you. This is mentorship. I tell you why they punish lecturers and pastors. Because people don't do their homework at home. And they transfer every kind of trouble and say, just go to church. Pastor Dele will sort everything about your life. Are we together? One day your child will follow you while you are praying. And one day when you travel, he will wake up by that time alone. Ba, 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 ba. You'll be playing like a little boy. Lay hands on the mother. Lay hands on his toys. You think he's playing. Are we together? Where a father can sit with his family and say, look, once a week we are going to have Bible study. We will review what pastor taught if you are under my roof, you are going to listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I have a lot of people by God's grace that I raise and train. Nobody under my roof will not serve my God. No. I'm not one of those that say, oh, be nice with the human right. If you are under my roof, you are going to serve my God. That's for sure. The day you're on your own, you can do what you want to do. But as far as it is under my roof, it's very important convergence of believers when we were growing up there were certain things we laugh at today that was the build up of many of us an average believer cannot tell you the books of the bible it looks little but it's a serious issue how many disciples um, um, does Jesus have you said how many you say 21 more than 22, 14. Another person will say three. You see, these things, they are not funny. It's a revelation of something we are losing. Hallelujah. People come to church and instrumentalists, when they finish playing, they will go and sit outside on a stone, browsing while preaching is going on. Once the man of God raises his song, they'll quickly come, sit on the drums, sit on this, play, and, and the pastors will quickly arrange things. And we're like, well, how now? Yesterday we discussed, you know, church. See, some of these things our fathers did, it looked crude, but in a bit to transit, we didn't know what to throw away and what to preserve. We just threw everything away. There are things we must bring back. You don't like what I'm teaching you. That's the price for revival. Though. Regular convergence. Number three. You want to mentor nations and territories and bring them to the Lordship of Christ. There will have to be an open display of real miracles 
signs and wonders that go beyond the church walls. An open display of miracles, signs, wonders beyond the church walls. It creates convictions in the heart of men. The heart of the community. Acts chapter 19 verse 11. We are looking at the book of Acts. So you see it was prophetic that pastor was saying study the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19 please. Verse 11. Let me read it. And God wrought special miracles. Say special miracles, please. By the hands of Paul. He says, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. And the disease departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit did leapt and so on and so forth. Verse 17, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear came on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified 18 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Please look up. When pastor was sharing here about how the 1930 move started, you heard what he said. That apostle Babalola came out just to look for something to eat and saw a dead man. Let me tell you this. There is too much talking among believers. It is the reason why the world is tired. Do you know they look at Christianity as a nuisance to civilization? Because there's too much talking and little doing. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Real, genuine miracles and outpouring of signs, wonders, miracles, not by men of God. By believers beyond the church wall. One madman, popular madman, meets Jesus Christ, and ten cities, ten cities are won within a moment. Let me tell you this the way we are doing evangelism now, if God does not help us, even in hundred years, we will not win half of our territory. You see the burden it takes to beg people? <clears throat> that strategy is deformed. We have to trust God for a dimension. There is no human being who sees the spectacular and ignores it as a common sight. No. John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in an interruption of the course of men by an agency that is higher than this dimension. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can bring notable miracles. I believe the dead can rise. Many of you have heard the things that God has done in and through our ministry. Let me tell you sincerely. Well, I don't know how it works here, right? Here. But where I come from, you want a man to really love Jesus and sit down. You are going to have to trust God for grace. There used to be a gentleman years ago. True story. He was a capon in one of these cult groups. They call Highlanders. 
somewhere around the south south this guy operated here in lagos operated somewhere they locked him in prison men who depended on his ministry came and opened him out i mean he would kill you like chance play he slept on a grave for three days to receive power like a grave in the night you don't move you don't drink water you don't lie down like that so if you want to shoot him or kill him he'll just like vapor and you don't see him again now true story to cut the long story short that gentleman came down i don't know what brought him down to zaria so he came for our meetings ah may you be powerful oh in the name of jesus christ the language this generation understands in the realm of the spirit. You know that this generation is not just men alone. Spirits too have their generation. The language is power. Are we together? He sat down in one of the overflows. According to him. He said that he travels to churches and when he sits down and watches men of God preaching, he just looks and says, oh dear, this is unfortunate as weak as anything can do anything i want to do with him so when he came true story i just came on stage and as soon as i stood there he saw people falling under the anointing outside and he said wow that whether this man is using divination or is using real power there is power in this place i opened my mouth to speak and that was the last thing he could remember all he saw was fire that was it I think they carried him outside or something. I can't remember what happened. That gentleman's life changed in a way and manner. One of the gentlemen in our protocol department, right? The one who works, heads the transport unit. He was an occultist. A bad occultist. Someone invited him. And he came and stood before me and I looked at him. I remember that time. In less than five minutes... He was already broken and all those nonsense left him. His friends gave him seven days to return. They dead him. Seven days has become more than a decade. Listen, let me tell you. Until men see a display of the authentic power of God, they have a right to question it. Our fathers didn't go to school, but goodness, they had power. These men had power with God and power with men. The story he gave about Apostle Babalola and the rest. I don't know if you watched a video. I'm sure it was on. I'm not so much on social media. But there was a video one time of a river that just came out somewhere in the east. One river that just evolved out of nowhere. Huh? With water. And people were running and jumping there. And getting healed. Throwing their crutches. You, you remember that time? The way we are busy looking for money in this country, Seth. Even when things are happening like this, nobody has the time to go and check. You just, which what river? Let me go and make sure that my allowance is released. Now, but on a serious note, when that happened and they brought the video and I looked at it, I said, for me, I'm not concerned whether it's demonic or, or whatever. The issue is over 3,000 people with no invitation in a dirty river in this our excellent world that even when there is no fun you can complain and those people came if you see the intelligent people passing through that dirty water one woman was just bathing herself passionately in that river that's to tell you listen is to tell you that beyond all these formations people are looking for real results real results you would thank pastor after this conference. You would come and kneel and say, Pastor, thank you. Help that lady, please. Men of God are not powerful again. The limit of our power is this, falling down. That's it. Once you can get someone to fall down, you move around as if you were given an award. Power is shown by the testimonies that follow. That you sit under an atmosphere, even if it's by mistake. L let me tell you this. If you were going somewhere and this is a shrine, and you enter by mistake, and say, sorry, I was looking for a junction. Your life would never be the same just because you entered by mistake. The man will say, bye bye, go, until you see him later. You say, you came to see me. He said, no, I was just passing. 
I made it a personal goal. The highest time you must meet me to change is once. There is no reason why you should meet me twice to be changed. You can meet me twice to grow. But it's a cry I cried to God for many years. I said, Lord, put something on this vessel. That if I contact you once, you know by heaven and by earth that your life will never be the same. This is the only thing that will make Gentiles come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Praise the Lord. I remember prophesying to a king, a first class king in this country. And God gave him a major breakthrough and he invited me to come and pray in his palace. And, when, and you know when you get to the palace, you remove your shoe. I was, he said I should enter. Those guys that hold uh, this thing were looking at me. And man, I said, don't, don't try me. You don't know what I did to your God that is bringing you. You know, these people just want to insult your intelligence because... One of the things you must receive in this conference is a true impartation of spiritual power. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.